the message that I have for today um, was, you know, uh, it started off with um, a, a comment that one of my friends had made on Facebook um, in one of the groups um, for one of the town groups that I'm a part of. Um, and this was back in December around Christmas time. Uh, so one of the comments that she made, she um, is not a Christian. She doesn't believe in God. Um, we went to school together, you know. But anyway, so she's in a, um, a same-sex relationship. She doesn't believe in God. Um, and she had made comments, you know, somebody had posted on there that, you know, w the reason for the season, basically, you know, Jesus is the reason that we celebrate Christmas. And she commented on that, that that was very um, rude and un inconsiderate to those who may not believe in God and may not have those beliefs. And at first, you know, that kind of made me angry. I'm like, well we could say the same thing for you. You know, if you don't believe in this, then, you know, why aren't you being rude for not allowing us to believe and express our beliefs? Um, which, in a lot of times, that's the case. You know, they say, oh, well, you know, you, you believe in God. You know, you, everybody doesn't believe that way, so you just need to keep that to yourself because that's offensive to us, that you're telling us that we're wrong. But when it's the other way around, Right. Whatever they believe is just, well, this is how we believe, you know, and you should think the same way. So at first it made me kind of angry, but then, you know, it, we can't expect the world at large to think as we as Christians do because they're not Christians. And that's, what our job is, is to not go out and tell them how wrong they are, you know, what they're doing is sin, and we as Christians sin as well. So being part of the church, being the body of Christ, is not just going out and telling people you're sinning, you need to change, this isn't how you're supposed to be. The point is we need to bring people to God because God's the only person who's going to change their heart. We can't do that. So the message, that, that was the message that I had started with in December. Um, and as I started to try and read more into that and say, you know, how can I develop this into a message, it kind of went in a different direction. So um, it's st still relevant, but it went in a little bit of a different direction. The story of Zacchaeus, um, the Bible says that Zacchaeus was a tax collector. And it was le the chief tax collector for the region. So if you don't know about the tax collectors of that time, um, the Romans imparted taxes upon um, the people in the region. And the publicans, or the tax collectors, um, were, it was their job to collect these taxes. But they weren't always honest, and they would overcharge people on their taxes, and that was how they made their money. So the Bible says that he was the chief tax collector of the region, Zacchaeus, and that he was a very wealthy man. The Romans didn't pay their tax collectors. The only way they got paid was by overcharging and overtaxing people and keeping the excess for themselves. So that's who Zacchaeus was. And we see as Jesus was um, passing through, um, through town, Zacchaeus wanted to know who he was. So he ran ahead of the crowd you know, climbed up in the tree to see Jesus. And he called, as he passed by, Jesus called him down um, and it says that salvation is coming to your house today. Yeah. So, 
talking, and the, the crowds that were around him are like, look, you're going to this, this publican's house, this tax collector, he's, he's robbed <laughs> everybody here, he, you know, and, you know, why, we're all here, why are you going to this guy's house? You know, a sinner, why, why are you, you know, going to his house? And it's not, God didn't come to lead the righteous to him. He came to lead the lost to him. So if you already know the way to him, you don't, you don't need God to show you, you know, you don't need God to come to your house and have dinner with you. God is concerned with the people who don't know. And we, as the body of Christ, should be concerned with those who don't know. So, while it is good for, you know, all of us to be here, fellowship, and be a part of the church together, we need to be focused outwardly to the world that does not know who God is and get them in church where they can experience God and he can make the change in them. But as you see in the video, the hat represents Christ. As you receive Christ, as you start to pass that around to each person, more people join in. More people are passing the hat. You know, that normally that's a bad phrase, but in this case, we need to be passing the hat along to those around us. So, and just some examples. These are loose examples, but it's things that I was led through while I was reading. And you see examples where, um, where Jesus heals people along his travel, um, eating with sinners in, uh, let's see, Mark 2, 13. And he went forth again by the seaside, and all the multitude resorted unto him, and he taught them. And as he passed by, he saw Levi, the son of Alphaeus, sitting at the receipt of custom. Um, Levi was also a tax collector um, in um, imports. So uh, he saw Levi, the son of Alphaeus, sitting at the receipt of custom, and said unto him, Follow me. And he rose and followed him. And it came to pass that Jesus, that as Jesus sat at meat in his house, many publicans and sinners sat also together with Jesus and his disciples, for there were many, and they followed him. So there were sinners and publicans following Jesus, eating with him in his house. We need to be that way as well. You know, we can't just say, we can't just preach the word to sinners and then go home and, and, and be with the people that are Christians. You know, we need to be fellowship with sinners, fellowship with the world because they are the ones that need to be here. We're already all here together. So we need to be fellow we need to fellowship with sinners. We need to be out there with them, showing them the light, not beating them with the word, saying, You need to get right, you need to be like this. We need to get them here so that they can experience God and God can change them. Because that's the only way they're gonna change. If someone came up to you and said, you know, here's my Bible. This is what you need to be like. What, what's your automatic response? Well, I already know I'm right. They have the same mindset. That's what they've, they've grown up with. That's what they've been around. That's what they've studied, what they believe. So we're not going to be able to beat them over the head with the Bible and change their mind. We need to get them in church, let them experience God for who he is for themselves, and come to the light. God is the light. So, um, another story. Um, 
in the Bible. As Jesus passed by, as he passed by, uh, around the pool, there were seven porches, um, or five porches, excuse me, five porches, and that's where um, the sick would lay out and wait. And periodically, an angel would reach down and trouble the waters, and whoever was first to step into the pool would be healed of their sickness or infirmity. And as Jesus was passing by, he saw a man, and it says that he was in his infirmity for 38 years. And Jesus saw that he was in his infirmity for a long period of time, and he, he asked the man, would you not be healed? And the man says, well, I, I have nobody here to help me to the pool. So as I'm making my way there, somebody else steps down in first before me. And then God says to him to take up his bed and walk that he's been made whole. And he did. So he, he, didn't, he didn't question what had, you know, what do you mean get up and walk? Don't you see me laying here? <laughs> We're all, you know. So he didn't ask. He got up and walked. And then as he did, he went and told the town what had happened. He didn't just get up and walk and go home and have a good life. He got up, walked out, and told everyone in the town. And we see the same example again where, um, I believe it was in the same story, um, when, when uh, Jesus had um, the sinners and the publicans and the, all the disciples were gathered around his house, and there was um, four men uh, had brought their, um, their friend who could not walk, he was sick. And they cut the hole in the top of the house and lowered him down so that he could get to Jesus. So he first uh, tells the guy, you know, you're forgiven of all your sins. Arise, take up your bed, and walk. And he does. And he does the same thing. He goes out and he tells the town what has happened. So... That's what we need to be doing. We need to be, you know, we don't just come here for ourselves. We are coming here to be poured into, to be renewed, and to carry it out into the world. We don't just come here to sing good songs, to hear a word, and then go home and reflect privately in ourselves. We need to share that with everybody. So, just like in the video that we saw, we need to be passing the hat. We need to be passing the word to everybody that we come in contact with. Come on, come on. So, the example that I started with, um, uh, one of my old friends, um, we can't just, we can't expect people to follow what we follow. We don't need to be attacking them for their false beliefs. We need to bring them in and show them love because that's what God did. God didn't come to condemn people. He came to save them. He came to show them the way to the light. That's what we need to do as well. We need to bring people in, show them love, show them compassion so that they can experience God for who he really is, not just a book that somebody reads from. 